Welcome everyone to Inverse Social Hour. My name is Jake. I'm the senior entertainment editor at Inverse.com. I'm really excited to have Reggie Watts on the show. He's a comedian, he's a musician, he's an actor. He's just like an all around genius. Get a close up of his face. He's probably the guest with the with hair crazier than mine, the first one we've had so far. So that's, <laughs> that's very exciting to me. If you're new to this, all these interviews go on our YouTube channel, so please check that out too. Inverse, YouTube.com slash inverse. Please subscribe and all that good stuff. First question for every guest is, uh, can you make a toast to someone or something that you'd love to shout out? Uh, let's give a toast to all the people who have chosen to lead their lives through love. I like it. Cheers. Now that we've toasted, maybe we can pour one out for uh, a canceled show or a broken up band or a movie or a game that you think deserves another shot. Oh, wow. Canceled show. Well, you know, I thought Tuca and Birdie, you know, being canceled really sucked, but then they got picked up. So. Oh, wow. And I'm excited for that one. I know you're also, you're on Tuca and Birdie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of the, I'm one of the guys, uh, Tuca and Birdie. Um, and, but I don't know if I'm going to be in the new series or not. Oh, really? Still not sure? You, your character was great, although obviously you're not supposed to like him. No, no, no. He's uh, he's very much a, uh, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a troublemaker. What was it like playing that kind of role? A bit of um, a misogynist almost, right? What was, it must be tough. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I loved, I loved that they had, uh, you know, myself as kind of a misogynistic asshole. And then um, John Early also played. I was glad to see, and both of us could be like further from that. The nicest guys, know. yeah. Yeah, it's just very funny to me. But I think, in a way, to play a character like that, it's like you know all the stuff you know that people who think like that do, and yeah. how they think about things. And so, um, I think it just kind of comes naturally. You're just like, well, I'll just do the thing that you hate about you know guys being stupid idiots, you know. Well, I hope you're in season two. I uh, hope so, too. I, I saw you, fingers crossed, I saw you uh, were tweeting recently about the Cyberpunk 2077 game, which looks really fun. Have you had a chance to play that, or are you just watching those videos? Uh, I'm just watching the, the playback videos. I've been excited about Cyberpunk 2077, 2077 since uh, hearing about for years. the possibility of it. Yeah, yeah, for years and years, right? And then I was also a fan of... Uh, Cyberpunk 6,325. The board game? Is that? That was the first one. Yeah, the first, okay. yeah, the first one. No, I mean, like, yeah, w yeah, when it was an RPG, when it started as like a pen, pen and paper game with some dots yeah. and a very thick manual. I was a fan back then. I was a fan of, uh, you know, anything cyberpunk or cyborg related all my life. And so when I heard that uh, CD Project Red Green fuchsia was taking on this amazing it's a huge huge undertaking obviously yeah but but the the main thing that was important to me was that it, the uh the guy who created uh cyberpunk who i don't know if a lot of people know is an african-american dude from seattle um oh, yeah. like he was heavily advised on the world and the philosophy of it so that made me excited awesome. about it even more that's very cool as a cyberpunk fan generally if you could get any one cyberpunk augmentation on your body what would it be? Mm. I think I would do my eyes. Ooh. Yeah. Just like Terminator vision, that kind of thing? Yeah, like just like having perfect vision, you know, and then some enhanced capabilities as, mm. as well, like, you know, like night vision and things like that. That would be, that would be pretty rad. That would be sweet. I want a third arm. I'm into cyber augmentations, but uh, I, I hope, I hope that it, that they stay non-invasive. So they're just additive, you know, uh, cybernetic yeah. things. Just fun so you stuff. can take it off. Yeah, <laughs> just fun stuff. You know, you don't have to like commit to like, I just replaced my spine. I also have a question coming up about your role in Rise of Skywalker. So wait, wait on that one. But first, back to social hour. It's karaoke night. Um, what's a famous role that you wish you could have played from the past? Probably maybe an, a member of the team in the original uh, Mission Impossible. Oh, the show? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. You know, there's just kind of like a hep kind of jet setter uh, 
you know, adult contemporary sophisticated yeah. vibe to it that I loved. Now, would you, t would you take Tom Cruise's role and do all those crazy stunts? Oh yeah, for sure. I would, I would totally, <laughs> I would totally do that. Like, like the training intensity that it, I would do it only as an excuse or mainly as an excuse just to get in really optimal shape. Uh, okay, next question. Your drinking buddies just got here. Who would you want to have a drink with, alive or dead, fictional or real? I forget her name, but she was the, uh, the oh, I almost had her name. She's in um, Altered Carbon. And uh, she is a leader of the resistance. Um, and I forget her name, but oh, nice. um, hmm. yeah, she's pretty badass. I would love to like hang out with her. Have nice. a chat bring the cyberpunk theme back i like it i gotta ask about this star wars question i saw that you had a very small role in rise of skywalker yes that's correct you you voiced lando calrissian while he was in disguise that's correct can you explain this to me i'm i'm so curious what that means and what that experience was like what an <laughs> honor it must be to voice lando <laughs> I, I you know very weird situation <laughs> um yeah, basically, from a long time ago, since uh, eight millimeter, uh, uh, JJ, I've known JJ since then. Like he, uh, wow. just we just hang out. I don't know, like we've hung out like just at his office or like you know cool. at a social event or something like that. We're really friendly, and he's um, helped out with a couple uh, uh, pitches and things like that. Really cool guy, um, very very generous dude. I really like him and. Uh, and one night, it just been a long time since I seen him, and I knew that he was, you know, probably in a mad dash to complete the film. And uh, I just kind of, you know, texted him and was like, "Hey, man, I uh, hope you're doing well. When you're done with the film, sometime, I would love to stop by the office and just like, you know, have a hangout chat." And he was mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really crazy right now, but yeah, yeah, yeah." And then like half an hour later, I get a text back from him. He's like, "Hey, do you want to do a voice?" And I was like, "Uh." yeah of course and he's like well come down to the studio now and so like I, I drove down i forget which studio big studio whoever was the, the studio behind it uh i drove there yeah. um went to uh i think it was paramount maybe and uh <laughs> I, I show up and i'm trying to like find my way i uh i'm with a friend too because we were supposed to be hanging out and she was like yeah i'll go with you and so we like <laughs> drove to the studio we're confused where we were supposed to go finally someone directed us and um, we, he kept saying, kept referring to the Julie Andrews mural. Uh, and I was mm. like, Julie Andrews mural. And I was like, and then finally I just looked and there's like this giant mural. I was like, okay, there it is. And then down the street around the corner, there it is. There's the studio. We found him, went in there. And then he told me who it was. And, uh, and I was like, no way, man. Wow. Wow, really? Lando Carissian. That's awesome. You know, he's the great Judas. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so, uh, so I go into the room, this, this you know one of the uh, editing like viewing rooms it's like a you know imitation movie theater but with all the mixing gear in, in it and uh we he has a mic set up and i'm standing there and he's like directing me it's like so weird i'm like wow. I'm, I'm, i i was i went from sitting on a couch playing the division two <laughs> to being in this giant editing movie theater room doing the voice of lando caricio with jj abrams directing me in like a, an hour I was like, you know, if you have to cut it and it's not the right vibe, I totally get it. You know, no worries. It was just really mm -hmm. cool of you to invite me. And uh, then the next day, I did two shows. I did this alien show for uh, Disney, which is like an alien interview show uh, that'll come out at some point. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, the guest that wasn't there, but that's on the same show as me, was Billy D. Williams. Oh, wow. <laughs> then the guest on the Late Late Show was... Julie Andrews. That's too. That's too funny. I don't. That's crazy. It, I don't believe it's it. <laughs> totally crazy. I, I, I barely believe. It. I was telling my friends, and and all anyone can do is just like, oh, that's because it's too, like, it's too cl close. I think this might be proof that we're living in a simulation. That's to be what I was. That's what I'm glad <laughs> you said that because that's exactly what I always say to everybody. Uh, it's true. But anyways, that's that's the story. That's how it happened. And they yeah, they kept me in. It's incredible. Was, I was very happy. I was just thinking about, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here in the yard that I grew up in, you know, and I'm sure like to my left, I would have had Star Wars figures, yeah. you know, like on the grass and playing lasers and stuff with my friend, like, you know, uh, with a TIE fighter. And I'm, I'm, you know, still in this backyard and like, oh yeah, who would have thought way back then that I would have had like, you know, a tiny little voice, but it's in a Star Wars movie. It's crazy.
back to the social hour experience. We're going to do some tri like bar trivia. So pick your trivia Ooh. team. I'm not going to ask you any trivia questions. I just want to know who would be on your trivia team. If you could pick like two or three fictional or real people, how do you, how do you get that ultimate team? Oh, the tri trivia team. I guess I would get the dude that won a lot on Jeopardy. There's that legendary dude, yeah, that like just like knew everything. Um, <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there are many, but whoever that guy was, I'm sure it's the, the, the latest person. Okay. I, I would pick that person because I, sure. I'm so I, I know what I'm talking about. Oh, you know what? Scott Ackerman, probably. Oh, yeah? Good, tri yes. good trivia? Yeah. Scott Ackerman is like one of those guys that like, he knows so much about stuff and it's always surprising when I bring up the huh. subject and be like, Oh yeah, I know about, but I'm like, wow, that's just insane. Or maybe, uh, maybe Imogen Heap. Oh, interesting. Yeah. These are interesting answers. I never would have thought Imogen Heap, but yeah, I mean, well, she's just like, she's a technologist and she knows a lot about oh, stuff. Yeah. I mean, she wouldn't know a lot. I don't think, excuse me, Imogen, but I, I think <laughs> she, she might not know as much about pop culture. But uh, she would know a lot about like deep engineering, technological, and like obscure artists. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, you might, you just mentioned Scott Ackerman, um, great, great comedian. I've seen the you know the show you guys did together it was Comedy Bang Bang was great. And now you're with you now you're the musical uh, band leader for James Corden. So you've sort of done that twice. Who would you say is the better late night talk show host, Scott Ackerman or James Corden? Gosh, that's so that's so tough. Well, I mean, they're kind of two categories, right? It's like, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> it's not I mean, really a fair question, but I, 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 I yeah, want to ask it. Yeah, I'd say that probably James is the better. He's very good. Show, so talk show host only in that Scott does not play a very good talk show host in, <laughs> in Comedy Bang Bang. The strength no. of his character is not that he's an amazing interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> it's that he's kind of terrible at it. And, and he picks terrible guests and terrible things <laughs> keep happening all the time on the show. So... On a scale of adventure, probably Scott would mm. be the one. Um, but on the scale of proficiency in what the basic function of the role is, I would say James. All right. Good answer. Very diplomatic. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's last call at Social Hour. Before we start wrapping this up, what's a recent book or movie or show that you enjoyed that you want to recommend to everyone else? Oh, you know what I saw? Uh, my friend Cecilia, she uh, she goes by Gothic Tropic. She's an amazing musician. Check her music out. But um, she turned me on to this movie called The Little Hours that hardly anybody I know has ever heard of. But it's uh, it's got like every, everybody, like the, the cast in it is insane. It's like Fred Armisen, Molly Shannon, um, wow. Kate Micucci, Aubrey Plaza, uh, Alison Brie, What's John the, C. Riley. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it. It sounds great, though. It's really weird. It's like a lot of people. I mean, I didn't hear about it, and I, I, I think I might have seen like a long time ago. I might have seen a, uh, a, a preview for it or something. But it was like this indie film that was, you know, probably financed and pushed through. Wait a second. Of... Was this the one that takes place in like the the middle like Middle Ages? It's like, the, it's like yeah, it's like the late 1600s. Oh, I saw like. that amazing movie. It's yeah, so they're funny. They're like Aubrey Plaza is this like sex crazed nun and like yes. Oh yeah, it's that's a that's a great movie. Oh yeah, I, I saw that. I loved it. it it's such a I know and, it, and, and it's and it slips through the cracks. But I I saw it. I couldn't believe it. I was laughing my ass off the whole time. I mean, that, maybe some people might not find it as funny, but I was just blown away. That was like one of the most creative movies I've seen in quite some time. Amazing. I think maybe it's like a little too weird for some people might be its issue. It's a very weird movie and I love it. Yeah, maybe so. It's aggressive. It's aggressive. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. So let's, let's leave a tip for so, a social hour. You're like accomplished musician, accomplished actor. So let's say someone was like, I want to be the next Reggie Watts. What would you uh, well, uh, I would say, you know, find what you love, you know, like what, whatever it is that's, that's, that's on your mind. There's two motivators mm -hmm. that happen with people that decide to go into a, a, an artistic field and then make a career out of it. There's the one motivator is uh, 
uh, is fame recognition, you know, that's everything. Yeah. I think that's like a terrible motivator. I think it's a, the, probably the worst reason to do it for, I, I think it's certainly a passing thought. You might imagine yourself, you know, on stage or whatever in front of tons of people. And that's like totally normal. I get that. But if the prime motivator is to be famous, I wouldn't bother chasing that. I would say that the, the best reason is because you can't imagine yourself not doing what you're doing. You know, you can't, you wake up mm -hmm. in the morning and you have these thoughts of creativity. You wake up in the morning and, or you, you know, you're in the mid afternoon and you're talking to someone and suddenly you space out and you're like, oh my God, wouldn't it be great if blah, 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 blah. Like if you can't turn off your mind and you're constantly steering yourself to creative ideas and see the world in a different way and want to contribute in a, in a, in a, in a, in a specific way, I'd say that's the prime motivator. And then after that, it's just protecting your ability to be who you are. Like, don't compromise uh, yourself. There's certainly, there are a few compromises in the beginning if you want, you need to get momentum. So sure. for me, I was saying yes to every gig that came along because I wanted experience. You know, I wanted as much experience, experience, experience. But whenever I did it, it was very clear that I had to kind of do it my way um, because uh, otherwise, why are you hiring? You know, like, it, it's, it's like, it's, I found myself in situations yeah. where people have hired me and then they want me to do something that anybody could have done. Oh yeah. And then and then the question is like, well then why did you hire me? Um so you have to kind of fight for that a lot and that means being on set and sometimes me correcting people saying like no, I'm not going to do that. Um <clears throat> or I'm not going to do that. Not in an assholeish way, but just like like I I I'm not going to do that because you're not going to get what you need out of me if I do that. Um and I'll feel compromised and I'll feel gross and I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to do that. And I'm very and yeah. And so I would say that those are the important factors. And the other thing is like to remain collaborative and open, you know, that don't claim responsibility for all of your ideas because oftentimes it's just a passing wisp of a, of a thing that other mm -hmm. people are probably thinking too. So, uh, you know, you yes. have to remain collaborative, open, but also protect your ability to, uh, well, protect your source, whatever, wherever you draw your creativity from, like, protect that. That was great. I, I, I'm taking a lot of that personally. I'm going to use that for myself. I hope everyone else got some of that. It's really, really interesting. So we just paid the tip, but someone else has picked up the tab. Who in your life has done a big favor for you that you'd love to um, call out right now? I mean, aside from my parents, you know, being like so cool. Parents about, are great. You know, they're just like, what do you want to do? <laughs> well, that sounds crazy, but sure, go for it. Like, uh, aside from that, that was definitely very helpful, uh, incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I guess I would have to say Conan O'Brien. Oh, um, interesting. Conan O'Brien and his team, there were a bunch of people who worked for Conan O'Brien that were friends of mine in the comedy scene in the early 2000s uh, in New York, which was kind of a small, tight-knit scene. It was like mm -hmm. everybody was a part of that, Kumail Nanjiani, um, like – and Chelsea Peretti, like all these huge names that we see in films and stuff like that, supporting roles, lead roles that, that we were all hanging out in New York back in the day. And, uh, and they kind of convinced, I think Conan, cause you know, when he got let go from this night, the tonight show, they quickly, you know, figured out a way to do this live tour. And, you know, and I heard about it, it was like, Oh, that's cool. Conan's doing a live tour. That's great. And then I hear this, get this email from my manager going like, Conan are considering uh, having you opening. And I was like, what? And, wow. uh, and, uh, yeah, and that was it. They just kind of, he just kind of asked me to do it. I think he saw some videos, um, some people, again, some of my friends who were working, uh, for, for him at the time, probably just was like, here, check out this video. And he saw it and he was like, yeah, that's great. Let's have him open. It was one of the best times of my life for sure. Um, just tri trip me out, you know, <laughs> was it just the two of you or are there other acts? Just you and Tommy? Yeah, sometimes there were guest acts. Yeah, there were like guest bands and things like that. Like I think Chris mm -hmm. Isaac was on one night. Um, Willie nice. Nelson, I think, was on wow. one night. I think. Um, and Jack White uh, and sure. a, a couple, a couple other amazing people. And he had like, like kind of cameo guests uh, would like go come on and do like a bit. Um, yeah. Depending on where we were. It's closing time at social hour, so <laughs> you got you can't, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. What is the next project, the next thing you want to do that you can tell me about? I guess the next thing I want to do is make a fully improvised uh, short film, just to kind of improvise with the cast over a period of time and uh, make a short film out of it. That would be really exciting for me. That sounds cool. You're, you did that special for Netflix 
not too recently where uh, it had like an improvised sitcom in it, right? Yeah, I just, I imagine like doing a sitcom, you know, I wanted to do like this <laughs> sitcom called The Crow's Nest for forever. And uh, it's still on my mind. Like I still think it's possible to do. Um, so I'd group that in there with the, the short film idea. Uh, but yeah, it was, that was my first attempt. I, I, I kind of got the special and I was like, oh, cool. I can try some version of, you know, the, the, uh, this improvised sitcom. Um, so in a way I kind of like used the special as an excuse to try that out. I'm there for an improvised movie. If Netflix, if you're listening, make it happen. Just give, give Reggie Watts some money. It'll, it'll be great. That was so great, Reggie. Thank you so much for the questions. Um, is there anything before we go that you want to promote or say? Uh, I would say, you know what? Check out my app. Uh, it's called WhatsApp. Yeah, it's available on iOS. It's got all my videos and a lot of dumb stuff on there. There's a store. You can buy my old electronics and headphones and stuff, um, computers. And then uh, I have a Android version coming out in September, so it'll be available on all platforms. Right now, it's just iOS. Just look for Reggie Watts uh, in the App Store. You should, you should find it. Thanks so much for joining me on uh, Inverse Social Hour. My name is Jake. And uh, yes, I'll see you all in the next one. Be sure to check out our YouTube page. Subscribe. Reggie, thanks again. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. And you too. Be well and possible.